Hi again, I'd like to continue my discussion of Parse. And in the last couple of videos, we you know created a new account, um, tested the Parse default project. Um, then we, in the last video, we created a, a form that lets you create new posts and upload you know data to to the Parse server. And right now, I can see posts that I create, and I can create new posts from my from my blog here that I'm working on. Right, I'll say. Um, parse is fun, um, you know, parse, uh, will save you much time, right? And then, um, I can post that and you can see, you know, it's going to show up here when I refresh. Oh, parse is fun. Parse will save, right? So there it is. So that's working pretty good. Uh, I don't want to keep going back to my parse, you know, to my parse website or the parse website to look at the data. I want to see that data appear on the web, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add that here. And the, how I'm going to do it is this. Um, you know, I've got this form here. And let's imagine that I want all of the new posts to show up or I want to list all the existing posts here underneath my um, my form so maybe what I'll do is this I'll um, I'll create a UL and you, you could do this with any tag right you know the tag doesn't really matter um, and I'll give it an ID and I'll say um, list posts how about that right and then I'll just put a, a comment in here Okay, so there's nothing here now, but we're going to put content in here when we load it from the database. Okay, so I'm going to grab the content from the database, and then I'll use jQuery to write it into this UL right here. So I'm going to have to write these, um, these posts in here, and we'll just kind of decide how they're going to look, right? So maybe they will look like, you know, an LI tag with... Um, you know, a, a heading, like an H1 or something, right? And then uh, maybe inside this, uh, you know, an a or next to the H1, we'll also have a paragraph, which will be the content, something like that. You know, maybe this could be an H2 or H3, right? You know, or any tags, really, okay? So, so this is what I'm going to create, okay? And there'll be a list of these, one LI tag, for each post and you know the title will be here and the content will be here okay so uh, you know this this is just a comment right now so that's that's how we're gonna map this out okay so now down here you know I've got this this block of code here that allows us to create a post now we need a block of code to 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 get posts and list them okay so here's what we'll do Let's make another function here. Um, we'll say get posts. Okay. So this function, its job is to go out onto the server and get posts from parse. Okay. So how do we do that? Um, let me actually, you know, you know I'm going to move this up here so we can see it next to the parse the parse initialize thing, right? I want to be able to see that stuff together. I don't like the way this is setting the tabs there, okay? There we go, right? So there's parse. This is my post class, right? This is going to be important. We're going to use that again here. And then this is my function that is going to get objects from parse, okay? So how do we get objects from parse? Well, what we need is we need a query, okay? So I'm going to make a variable to hold the query, and we make the query using parse dot query like this, okay? And when you make a query, you query a particular class. So what we're going to do is we're going to use post the post class right here as the query, okay? So we're going to say query new parse query for this 
class. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say query dot find. Okay. And this is going to, you know, send a request to the server and then wait for a reply. And parse is going to reply with either a success, right? And it'll reply by calling this function here or an error. Okay, so let me format my, my code here a little bit, right? There we go, so that looks nice. So query, find, and on success, we'll call this function, and if there's an error, we'll call the other function. So, and just like before, if there's an error, you know, we'll get an error object, and so we can say console.log. I'm gonna put query error here, just so we know that this error came from from this, you know, spot, right? And then we'll print the message by saying error.message. And up here, um, when you do a query, the query actually returns an array of parse objects. Okay, so essentially the parse objects are those rows that are in our database, right? And um, to capture those, we'll have to put a variable here. So this function is going to receive an array of parse objects, and we'll call that array results, right? And then if you want to see the results, like you'll have to, you know, print them somewhere. So maybe I'll do this. I'll say, um, you know, uh, for variable i in results and we'll loop through every item in the results array, okay? And for now, why don't we just send them to the console and then, you know, we'll print them on the page as a second step. So every one of these results objects is a parse object, just like you have on your database here. Let's take a quick look at them, right? Let's kind of move these so we can see both of these windows together. So when I loop through the results, if I queried the post table, it's going to give me all of these records, and every row here is a parse object, and it's going to have properties for ID, title, content, created at, updated at, and any other new columns that you added. So what we'll do is maybe we'll get the title, right? So to get the title, we'll say results, that's our array, which item in the array do we want? Well, we want item i, because we're looping by counting with i. And then I want to get, now the parse objects are not standard JavaScript objects. They're a little more complicated, so you can't just put the name of the property here like this, okay? In order to get the, the custom columns that you created, you have to use the get method. So you're going to say get and the name of the column, okay? So I'll say you know, results I get title. And then if I want to get the content, I'll say content results I dot get content. And, you know, of course, these names need to be spelled exactly the way the, the column names are spelled. Okay. So if I want to print these out to the, to the page, then what we'll do is we'll say, you know, console log, and then maybe we'll say, you know, title, colon, plus the title. I, I won't print the content, you know, it'll just be too long for the console, so I'll just print the title for now, right? And let's give it a test. So, oh yeah, we got to do one more thing, right? I forgot. So, you know, if we have this function get posts, it doesn't do anything just sitting here by itself. We have to call on it. So, maybe right below here, right? So it's not going to, you know, this the code in here isn't executed until we actually invoke the function. So I'll copy the name here, and then right below where the function appears there, I'll type in, 
you know, get posts with the parentheses, and then that'll invoke this function. And by putting the code in the function, we can call it over and over again. And so, you know, like when we create a new post down here, right, we might want to get the posts again because we've added a new one and we want to refresh the list, right? So, so having this in a function is kind of convenient, right? So let's go up here now, go to our site, and refresh the page. And then look, and there's all my posts. Hello, and other posts. Parking is fun, right? Or parse is fun, right? So, so there we go, right? So now I want to see them on the page, right? They're in the con they're in the console here, right? And if you don't know where the console is, do Control Key Inspect Element. It's a little different on Safari and and Firefox, but I think Fire Firefox and and Chrome do it the same way. You just Control Key Inspect, and then click on Console. And you'll see it. So how do I get them to display on the page now? Let's do that. Okay, so, so we've got everything working. So what I want to do is, before we do the for loop here, let's define a variable called output. And this is what we're going to print onto the page. And instead of, you know, just printing it to the console, we'll say output plus equals Okay, and then remember up here, I wanted to do a list with an H3 and a paragraph. So maybe I'll start with my list tag, and then I'll do output plus equals. And what I want to do here is I want to do an H3 tag, and then combine the title with it, and the closing H3 tag. Okay, and then maybe output, and we'll do plus equals. And then this will be my paragraph tag. And we'll include the content. And then we'll put the closing paragraph tag. And then we'll close off our list item. Okay, so, so essentially we've got an empty string, and then we're going to build a string that is, you know, some HTML, including the values from these variables here. And then after the for loop is completed, we'll print the HTML string into our page. So I'm going to set up an ID here, and that's going to be our list posts. Right, ID list posts here. And then using jQuery, we can use the HTML method to write some HTML content to this element. Okay, so we'll type output in here. Okay, so we're going to set the HTML to the, to the output string that we generated in the for loop. Okay, so let's save that. And now we'll go to our page and refresh. And then there's our post. So it says, hello, another post, post from website. Parking is fun. Or yeah, I said that again, my blog, right? What if we want to type in another post here? We can say, you know, um, hello, parse, right? Uh, wow, that was easy. And then I'll click submit. And I don't see that one here, but if I refresh, it says, you know, it says, hello, parse, right? It'll show up. So if I want it to refresh every time, that's where we can use this success function here on a save. So on a save, we can call our get post function again and refresh the list of posts, right? So, well, let's try it again. We'll say, um, I like this. It's easy. Okay, and then I'll click Submit, and then it should refresh. Actually, it didn't seem to do Let me submit it again. Oh, you know what? Probably because I forgot to refresh here, right? Oh, yeah, see, I clicked the button twice. But anyway, there you go. So there's a, another example on Parse. And, you know, in like an hour or something, we've made a sort of functional website here that's making use of the database. Thanks for watching.